Hello there! In this series, I will be creating a Wind Archer bossing mule. This series will be a retelling of the journey that I go through while also serving as an early game progression guide for beginners and returning players. You will learn how to create a bossing mule that requires low funding as well as the mechanics needed to beat each boss and gain insight on ways to progress through the early stages of Maple Story. Here are the parameters that I've set. I have to beat all the main bosses up to Lotus and Damien. I will not be receiving any carries from other players. All bosses must be defeated solo. There are no level or stat requirements in this series as long as I can beat Lotus and Damien. Then I've completed the series. Sit back, grab your apple, and let's get right into it. It's apple seed! I started off by using this mega character Burninator, which allows me to train a lot faster. I also used this trait boost potion and used the charm effect so that I can unlock my pocket slot. You can unlock both these items either through events or unaliving 300 mobs a day for the daily gift reward. Here I am working on my link skills. Every class in MapleStory has a unique link skill. Link skills can provide bonus stats as well as bonus effects such as EXP increase to help with your character's progression and training. I will go more in depth about this in the future, but my favorite to train with are Elven's Blessing and Rune Persistence. Here is my Legion board. I will go more in depth about this in the future, but this is just what it looks like right now. So from level 70 to 80, I trained that Orbis Stairway to the Sky 1. This map is really great because there's 4 platforms full of mobs and it's pretty easy to navigate. The diagonal platform is a bit annoying, but you get used to it. And then from level 80 to 90, I trained that Ariant, which is not a very popular place to train at or common. Like I know there's another map here that is very popular, but for me, I felt like Wind Archer's third job wasn't really cutting it. So I went with more flatter maps. From level 90 to 100, I trained that lap area C1 mostly grinding the security camera mini boss that's in this map it provides a lot of exp which you're gonna see here and they're very easy to kill at your level and so it's just one of those quick ways to gain levels when you're just too lazy to grind so my trick is to just unalive the security camera mini boss and then quickly switch channels and then doing it over and over again until i get to level 100. i place my change channel hotkey right next to my one key that way i can just press a button and then use my arrow keys to quickly swap channels as opposed to using my mouse so i hit fourth job advancement and i'm doing the fourth job advancement missions right now but i kind of just want to go over what i have planned out for the future of this character i'm definitely trying to get to level 200 as fast as possible while doing that, I'm also going to be working on defeating Rutabis five times so that I can unlock Chaos Rutabis. And then I also just want to grind Horntail, Zakum, and all the other bosses just so I can get the boss equips. I'll be showing you guys more of that process once I get to that point in the game, but for now, I've reached fourth job advancement and I've also unlocked my gold emblem. So I just want to show you guys the familiar system real quick because it is very important for the game and it does provide a lot of bonus stats that you'll need. In the early game, farming familiars are going to be tough because there's not a lot of mobs in the early game maps, your drop rate isn't a high. So the best familiar stats that you can get in the early game are 15% ignore defense, increased item drop rate as well as increased meso drop rate. So the first thing that I did was I went to look for a rune for the increased EXP effect and then I jumped right into Zakum. With my 2x EXP coupon as well as my rune and my mega character burninator effect, I can get about 9 to 12 levels at Zakum. There is a trick where people come in, kill the arms, and then get the EXP and then they leave the map which means they can re-enter the boss fight 30 minutes later and then they kill the arms again for more EXP. So at level 115, I went to do the Pianist Farm, which I don't normally do, but I thought I'd give it a shot this time. The Pianist Farm is really easy to do. All you have to do is enter the boss map, which is an Aqua Road, and then you just unalive Pianist, change channels, do it over and over again until you hit level 130, which is what I did. This right here is a Bounty Hunter Portal. 
Bounty Hunter portals usually spawn whenever you're grinding in maps, and it takes you into these mini games which provide rewards when you complete them. In my opinion, the two best rewards you can get are these two medals provided by Pollo and Frito. And then from level 130 all the way up to level 145, I trained at Korean Folk Town. And from level 145 all the way up to 160, I trained at Kerning Tower, which is honestly a really great training spot. There's very large mob count here, so definitely come here to do that. I figured the best way to end day one was to start on my Rutabis missions, that way I can start defeating Rutabis. Rutabis is very fundamental for your progression of MapleStory because not only do you learn a lot about the bossing mechanics and how to fight bosses in MapleStory, but Rutabis also gives you the Rutabis armor which is level 150 equipped that is very important for helping you advancing into the mid game. More on that when we get there. To wrap up the first episode, this is very much just kind of like an intro to the series. We haven't really made significant gains or advancements into our progression. We've kind of just unlocked Root Abyss. We're doing the pre-quest right now. We got to level 160. We still need to get to level 200, which we're all gonna do. But for now, I feel like this is a very great place to start and very great place to end the episode. 